All right, you beautiful humans, a little behind the scenes as I promised you. And for those of you that are not interested in video editing or think that you should be video editing on these MacBook Airs, this is Apple's argument. I am just here to debate. And so for those of you that have general work tasks uh, around the office, student scenarios, I will be doing videos on those. So stay tuned for those videos. Now, a couple of housekeeping things we have. So the base model M2 MacBook Air, and that's right here. And then on this side of the screen and behind me, we have the M1 uh, MacBook Air, and it does have disclaimer 16 gigs of RAM, but I do have an upgraded M2 Air on the way. So I will update the community and we can rerun these tests, but I figured this would just be kind of fun to see uh, what advantages we have, at least with M2, because all we hear about is thermal throttling. So we have a timeline here that would be a typical YouTube timeline. Uh, a couple of different camera angles. And so we have 8-bit footage from a Sony camera and we have 10-bit footage from a Sony camera. H, uh, HEVC and AVC, so H.265 and 264. We have audio and music and color and multiple LUTs and transitions. And so again, a fairly simple timeline, about 11 to 12 minute timeline. We'll play through it. So not just focusing on export times, but just playing through it, scrubbing through the timeline, looking at the thermals, looking at the RAM. And also too, I will push that up and we will do a longer timeline just to see if that's even feasible. And then we'll even play around with some 8K footage that is transcoded because again, putting raw footage on these, it's it wouldn't even be a, a fair uh, fight really. So I have the headphones on because I'm gonna be moving around, getting out of the shot and just need to monitor my audio. So let's get these timelines playing and seeing what's up. Also, real quick, if you see any jump cuts or like kind of fast forwarding or anything, I'm not, there's no shenanigans here. I'm just trying to move this along. Otherwise we'd be here all day. Okay, so roughly before we get started, the uh, efficiency and performance cores were mid 40s here, low to mid 40s, just depends on what we're looking at here on the M1, M2 about mid 40s. All right, and it looks like, so this is actually 120 hertz uh, display, but we are only uh, focus on 60 hertz. A couple of things too. Both of these machines are plugged in and they are also, and the reason why I had to do that is because one of them is connected USB-C, so it's charging it anyway. And we are using the exact same enclosure, uh, a, a Thunderbolt USB-4 enclosure, and I have tested these. So again, any bottlenecking, I have tested these thoroughly. We're not going to have any issues there. Okay, so... Both of the machines are up to 54 degrees. Oh no, but actually the M1 just is touching 60 degrees and we're mid to high 50s on the M2. Doesn't look like any drop frames. M2 seems to be cruising. The M1 is up about 10 degrees Celsius, more so than the M2. So again, with all this thermal throttling, I know when you're running Geekbench scores and just slamming it, yeah, you're gonna get it to throttle. One point five on the swap over here on the M1. Oh, so we are four, 4.86 on the swap for the eight gigs. And so Final Cut is using the majority of it, almost eight gigs on Final Cut here on the M2. Final Cut is actually using more, likely because it's like, well, you got more to give, so let's do it. 12 gigs and eight gigs as far as uh, what Final Cut is using. Memory pressure, 50% on the M2, 43 to 50. So it looks like, it's really hard to say. It almost seems like the M2 is, it's mem the memory pressure, which would likely be the case, is getting pushed a little bit harder than the M1. Like right now they're roughly the same, but then it kind of pushes up to about 80% on the M2 and 60 to 70 on the M1. 
but it, it, it kind of, it just drops down. It's so it's fluctuating. All right, so same deal. You can see that graphics, hard to say because the graphics, like it just kind of just depends on probably where it is in the timeline. And of course, one of the things that folks might say like, well, you're pushing an external display. Well, again, so this is a 3840 by 1080p that is essentially we're only pushing half of it. So basically a four, a 24 inch monitor for each device. And this is how somebody would work anyway. Like not everyone is just using the MacBook air and looking at that smaller screen. If you've got, if you need to spread out, you're going to use an external monitor. This is interesting. Okay, so now it looks like a 20 degree Celsius difference. So M1 with this codec, and again, the M2 should be more efficient with this codec, according to Apple. But we're looking anywhere from 15 to as much as 20 degrees difference. So the M2 is running cooler on this particular timeline. I bet you we can get it to to push it a little bit harder though. Ooh, got a little beach ball action there. Not so not beach ball action trying to scrub through it all or in this. Oh, and even though any nothing's been rendered or analyzed, it, it kind of had to load that in the timeline. Yep, so we're still still running anywhere from 15 to 20 degrees cooler on the M2, at least with this timeline. Although I am seeing a couple of those beach balls did bounce up there. And so that's a possibility that if you are video editing, as I've said before, I always recommend upgrading that RAM, but we'll get more into that detail once that upgraded machine comes in. All right, let's stop it and see what happens. So definitely, so nothing's happening. Things are dropping. So now they're at about 10 degrees. So that's coming down 50s, high 50s, 60, same deal. Okay, so we're recovering here, no fans. Let's get into a little bit more of a complicated timeline or at least more going on. All right, so longer timeline here, uh, a lot of the same footage. but it's almost an hour, hour long. So it's a lot of uh, repeated footage. But let's actually see if either one of these machines can really play it. All right, so the M1 is playing it, but definitely dropping anywhere from up to five frames, depending on, we're beach balling over here, it's trying to play. Thermals are mid 70s and 65 here. Yeah, I mean, this thing is struggling. Okay, so the M2 base model is not, not having it. Yeah, like we're, I can't even, okay. 
and as far as as far as the frames right now it's saying around fifth yeah it's it's dropping Okay, so this is interesting. This is where the M2 is at 73, so 70s to high 60s. And so that it's kind of like in line with the M1, although it seems to drop down to the 60s, high 50s. But again, I think it just has to do with the fact that it's it, it can't even keep up. So yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not thermal throttling. It's just the, the Ram and that GPU can't even keep up with it. I, and I think the Ram is a big one. Yeah. So again, it's kind of hard to judge the, the graphics here because it just depends on where it is in the timeline. All right. Just wanted to see how ridiculous the swap is. So, uh, up to 13 gigs of swap on the 16 gigs of Ram and it's showing final cut is using 24 but I can't even, I'm trying to get this thing to load, but it is severely beach balling on this particular timeline. So as I said in my other video, this would be an area where, yeah, you got a complicated timeline, forget it. But thermals are good. It's just, but it's not doing anything. So that's the issue. All right, swap on the M2 is around three gigs up to five, but I can't even see the process happening with each app. And yeah, it just, it just shuts down. So again, eight gigs with video editing, something like this, forget it. It's ridiculous. I think either MacBook Air, regardless of the RAM, it's, it's a little ridiculous. So speaking of ridiculous, why don't we try some 8K, just transcoded footage, just, just for giggles and just see what happens. All right, here's that 8K timeline. It is transcoded again to ProRes. Let's just see what happens. Oh yeah, both of them are struggling. I mean, I can at least get the 16 gigs. I can at least get that to show me what's happening here. We are definitely throttling or yeah. So we've got 82, 92 on the performance cores, 82 on the efficiency cores. I mean, it is definitely dropping frames. Interesting. Yeah. So almost 90 degrees on the efficiency and mid nineties on the M one. We're still in the sixties on the M two, but again, I mean, it's dropping so many frames. So if I keep letting it play, the M2, it'll tease high 70s. Still mid 80s to 90s on the M1.
All right, so we've stopped and then one's recovering as far as thermals. All right, so something interesting I found, some kernel task or a leak here. Um, so up to 25 gigs of swap on the M1. So something kind of went south on that. I'm just, of course, sharing that with you. Half a gig on the M2, but the M2 really couldn't do much of anything. But that's interesting. That must be like an OS thing. I'll have to dig into that, but just transparency, just letting you know. All right, so can you run a YouTube channel with a MacBook Air? Yes, but. So context matters. Either one with that first timeline, it was about 12 minutes, two camera angles, uh, LUTs, grading, transitions, effects. It really had no problem. And then the M2 managed thermally much better than the M1. So that was kind of a nice little surprise as we've seen all of this thermal throttling. So yes, I would say if your timelines are looking similar to that, and I'm also working with better quality instead of better performance in Final Cut Pro. So you could certainly drop that down to get an advantage, but I think better, at least better quality, like looking at the footage, it it does help me as, as a video editor. So that's just something to think about. Now, when we added in those additional camera angles, so up to six camera angles, up to almost an hour in that timeline, multiple transitions and effects, we kind of just repeated that we had some issues. So the M1 fared a little bit better than the M2, likely maybe because of that RAM, that extra RAM. Again, we will test the M2 upgraded version when it does come in, and I can certainly update you on that. But again, we kind of struggled a little bit. We could work through it. We could kind of scrub through it. It was, uh, I mean, it was barely manageable. Like you could do it, but then adding in the 8K uh, that it was it was Canon footage that was transcoded to ProRes. Even though you kind of hear about, oh, this 8K footage in, in ProRes, forget it. Like if time is important to you and you know the efficiency, here's the thing with export times, go have a snack. That's not the problem. Scrubbing through, working in the timeline, adding your effects and transitions, looking at everything in real time, that's what you need to focus on. So again, a simpler timeline like the first one, it could be a, a doable, but at the same time, if you need to scale up, if your workflow does start advancing or you need to kind of start adding to it, that could become problematic. But all of that footage I tested on the M1 Mac Studio and the MacBook Pros, and it was fine. So think about the context, think about your use case. And for those of you that might still be around at the end of this video, I will be working more day-to-day -day, uh, tests in with these machines, but just wanted to touch on the video. So I appreciate all of your time because I know this is really long and hopefully I answered at least all of the questions that I might have had or maybe you had. Hit me up in the comment section below. More videos to come. You keep rocking those faces and I will catch you right back here on the next one.